All right guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be tying a fly that I found in a fly box that was floating down the stream about four years ago. And ever since I found that fly in that fly box, it's basically became like one of my favorite fall nymphs to uh, fish. And it works year round really great just because it's a small little betis nymph, but fall and spring are probably the times that I use it the most. And it's a really good fly. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into tying this. I'm gonna show you guys the materials you need right now and then we'll go ahead and tie it. All right, so for the materials of this fly, the hook is an Orient Sun 7258 size 18 caddis pupa hook. And then the bead is a tungsten slotted black nickel 2.3. For thread, we're using Vivas ADOT and the color code is E14. It's sort of like a dark olive. The wing case and tail of this fly are both made of mallard flank in blue dun. And last but not least, the dubbing collar is made of Adams Gray super fine dubbing. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into tying this fly. Alright, so we're going to start this fly off here by putting the hook in the vise upside down. And then go ahead and just slip the bead on. It just makes it a lot easier for smaller flies. And then we can go ahead and rotate the hook over and make sure it's secured in the vise. Next you want to go ahead and get your bobbin ready with your olive thread if you haven't already. At this point you can go ahead and start your thread at the head of the fly and then just work down a little bit and then you can come in with your scissors and snip off that tag. And then for this fly I like to work the thread a little bit down into the bend and just like the look that it gives. Then you want to go ahead and grab your mallard flank and I like to strip off about 10 fibers for the tail. And then you can come in and do a little pin trap just to secure them to the hook. And then I like to work my thread all the way up to the top where the bead is again just to secure all that mallard flank down and make sure that it doesn't move. And once it's all secured down, you can come in with your scissors and cut it off. The length of this is all preference, but I like to make mine sort of look like a little shuck. And then once that's finished, you can go ahead and just cover up the rest of that mallard flank and maybe give it a little bit of like a taper look. And then once I have like a little bit of a thread dam, behind that bead I just like to make sure that it's sitting in the right place and then you're gonna to want to stop your thread just a little bit before the bead just to leave room for the wing case and the dubbing collar and then just like we did for the tail we're gonna go ahead and grab some more mallet flank I actually like to use a bit more fibers for the wing case and then you can come in and do another pin trap just to secure it to the hook and then once I have a few little wraps there, I just like to make sure that it's sitting on top and then secure it down and then take one wrap behind just to kind of prop them up a little bit. And then I take a few more wraps in the front and then I come in with the tying scissors and snip off the excess. Then I just come in and tidy it up a little bit, use some thread wraps to push down the rest of that mallard flank just to get ready for where we're gonna put in the dubbing collar. And then you're going to grab a small pinch of Adams grade super fine dubbing and then just dub yourself a small little noodle on the thread here. And then you can go ahead and work your dubbing from where the wing case is all the way up to the head where the bead is. And then I just take a few extra wraps and then go ahead and grab my whip finishing tool and do like a three or four turn whip finish. And once you have that pulled tight, you can come in with your scissors and snip off the thread. And then you can come in and snip the wing case. I usually like to make the wing case just about the same length as we did for the tail. And with all my flies, I put a little bit of UV just to secure those thread wraps. And then we'll go ahead and secure it with our UV light. After you finish UV curing the fly, the fly is done. But like I said, this fly is a great little pattern for fall and spring, but to be honest, it really does great any time of the year. And when I first found this pattern, it's actually in a fly box that was floating downstream. And I picked it up and took a look at the flies that were in it. 
and I found this little pattern and ever since then I've basically been using this pattern just because it's been so effective. That's going to be it for this video guys. Let me know what you guys thought of this video in the comments and go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this in the future. And then go ahead and smash that like button. let lets me know that you guys like these videos and keeps my morale up to keep making them for you. And until next time, peace. Thank you.